Welcome to our lecture online. Notice we're going to do the same problem we did on the previous video one more time, except for that there's a slight difference. This is the problem we had on the previous video. We had 0.2 times the quantity x minus 60, and here what we've done is we've written 0.2 plus the quantity x minus 60. Why did I do that? Well, I wanted to point out a very important difference. When we multiply both sides of the equation by 10 in order to get rid of the decimals, we only multiply on the left side the 10 with the 0.2, not with the x minus 60, because these two are factors of one another. So whenever there's factors and we multiply, we only multiply it once, not each of the factors. Let me show you as an example. Let's say we have the quantity A times B plus C. And let's say that we're going to multiply that by the number 10. So when we do that, since A is multiplied times B plus C, so that these two are factors, I only need to multiply it once with the A, not A and the B plus C, that would make it incorrect. So the result is that this would be equal to 10 times A times B plus C. But if instead we had it written the way we have it over here, where it's A plus the quantity B plus C, and now I multiply that times 10. Notice in this case, the 10 would have to be multiplied times the A because there's a plus sign here and also multiply times the B plus C. There we would do the, what we call the property of distribution, the distribution property. So this would become equal to 10A plus 10 times B plus C. Notice here we multiply both because they're two separate terms. Here we only multiply it once because they're multiplied together and so they're factors of one another. So here when we multiply the 10 times the 0.2 times x minus 60, we only multiply the 10 times the 0.2 and not the x minus 60. So now let's see how we would solve that problem right there. Again, we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by 10 to get rid of the decimal. Oops. I need to include the whole thing here. Let's go over, over here. So multiply this times 10, and over here multiply this by 10 as well. Notice in this case, the 10 would be multiplied with a 0.02, with the x minus 60, and with the 0.1x. Over here, the 10 will be multiplied with the 16 and the 0.4. So this becomes 2 plus 10 times x minus 60 plus 1x equals, this would be 160 minus 4. Now we need to get rid of the parentheses. So here we get 2 plus, now the 10 would be distributed over the x and the minus 60, so we multiply it times the x and the minus 60, so this becomes 10x minus 600 plus x is equal to 160 minus 4. Now we move all the terms of the x to one side, they're already on the left side, everything else to the right side. So that gives us 10x plus x is equal to 160 minus 4 minus 2 when we bring the 2 over to the other side it becomes a negative 2 and we bring the negative 600 to the other side it becomes a positive 600 so plus 600. Now we combine like terms so here we have 11x is equal to 160 plus 600 is 760 minus 6, so that gives us 760 minus 6, that would be 754 on the right side. Now does, does, this does not look like it's divisible by 11, so that gives us x is equal to 754 divided by 11 as a final answer. So notice the very important difference, and this happens a lot in algebra, when you multiply two factors with a number, you just only multiply it once. When you multiply two terms with a number, you do the distribution property and you multiply each term inside the brackets or parentheses with the number in front. And that is how it's done.